This is a continuation of my quick look at KDE. I rebooted it, and now I've noticed when I go to Alice, it no longer says one item, but it no longer has that up arrow. It just shows this folder is empty. So it's changed behavior just on a reboot, and I get both of them. I don't really know why, but at least now it's telling me that it really is empty. But I'm curious. I'm going to go ahead and open this up, open the desktop, and let's just create this. I haven't even tested this at all. I'll create a new folder, and I will call it dog. And I will open up another, open up that folder and call it cat. Should have done cat then dog to do my alphabetical stuff there, but that's okay. We'll do dog. And it say, oop, it flashed up one item that disappears. Now it says what's in there. Oh, but, oh my goodness, that's just a mess. So, and if I delete this right here, dog should say zero items. Oh, but it said one item, but just for a second. Let's see if it'll do it again. It does it just for... It's just doing weird stuff now. That's I didn't even expect that. And, oh, now it's not even doing the one second of flashing up. It's just staying empty. So did it catch up and it just took some time? I I don't know. Um, but it definitely is acting differently than it did before I rebooted. So, so that's just weird. Anyway, there are some things that I've actually tested that I wanted to show you. One of them is that you can go to full screen. This is kind of cool. I can go to more actions, full screen, full screen, there we go, and it gives me this warning. That's nice, okay. Now, this warning, though, has this question mark, and the question mark doesn't do anything. It just gives me this no symbol. There's no place on here that does anything. Out here, it doesn't even give me the no symbol, but I click and nothing happens. I don't really get it. Then you have this menu here. I could put this on all desktops. I could put this warning on all desktops. Think about that. Why? Anyway, there's a close. Is close the same thing as OK? Is this X the same thing as OK? I, I'm assuming so. I do want it to show again. Um, I'll hit close here. I haven't tested this one. It closed that. And now I can go ahead. Oops, now it's not letting me get out of full screen. Um, oh, because I have to hit the Alt F3. We just talked about that. So I hit, hit Alt F3, and now I can go ahead and get out of full screen. There we go. So, but let's go down here. You'd think I could right click, more actions. Oops, again, you have to be really careful with that menu. Full screen. Cool. Does the exact same thing, no warning. I could still use the Alt F3. And I could still go to more actions and get out of full screen. But there is no warning. When you do it from down here, there's just no warning. Boom. So if you happen to do it that way first, and you don't know this clever way of Alt F3, you just can't get out. But again, when I do here, full screen. It gives me the warning every time. So <laughs> these things are just thought out so poorly that, that it's kind of mind-boggling. I'm now going to go ahead and switch over to the Mac, and I'm going to look to see how full screen works on the Mac. Okay, on the Mac, let's look to see how full screen works. I'm going to go ahead and go full screen right here. Boom, I can go into full screen, I can go out of full screen. This works on almost any program. Not all programs have a full screen view, but any that do, you can do that. And I could just go ahead and go into full screen. I could then go ahead and switch back to my main screen. Oh, I'll go ahead and open up another full screen of this one. Right there, it shows it to me. I can even go ahead and have sort of this overview. So here I have two pages. It shows me the icon with pages, shows me the title, shows me the little icon. And here it is, and I can go ahead and switch through those pretty easily. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. I can switch through those. There's also a dashboard view. That's what it looks like. So I can go ahead, real nice, real easy, and I can go ahead and do that. I could go back to here. I could have this be full screen get back to my overview. This ties in directly to my virtual desktops. Now, it doesn't mean it's the only way I have virtual desktops. I could go ahead and add another virtual desktop there, but I could also get rid of this. But this is the way most people on a Mac use virtual desktops. Now, one weakness, let me go ahead and show you this virtual desktop again. I can't rename these virtual desktops. To me, that's maddening. I wish I could. I understand why you can't, because these become virtual desktops with the name of the program, but I'd still wish I could rename these and have standard virtual desktops. I talked about multiple tabs before, so I'm going to go ahead and open up multiple programs here, multiple windows, and let's go ahead and make these be tabs, and I will go ahead and put them onto dog. 
just so I can remember which one. It doesn't show you how things are grouped here, which is kind of crazy, but that's okay. I could go ahead, attach this tab. Now they're all one tab. But if I want to get a document, let's go to my desktop where I have some of these things, and I drag it over here. Nope, no do, can't do. It does not allow me to drag. Um, so you can't really work from one tab to the next of dragging things, moving them, if you have different programs. So you have the feature, but it's not really done well. Then you have this. If I go to close, I now want to close some of these tabs. Look what happens when I close this tab. I hit close, my X's move and my tabs move. And so trying to close things, everything's moving around. It works sort of the same way. You can go ahead, hit Control T, and I can get multiple tabs here. And here I will say, if I'm on my desktop, I can drag this over. And if I release, it says move copy. So it does work together and I'll cancel to get out of that. But again, when I go to hit my tabs, I have to chase stuff around. And that's just, that's just kind of silly. To be fair, the Mac used to be like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at it though. This is right here in Safari. If I go ahead and I close a tab, this is how when Safari got tabs, it worked. I can go ahead and close them. I don't have to chase stuff. It's only when I move the mouse that they get stretched out like that. Oddly enough, the Finder, when they added tabs to it, it wasn't like that. And so when you'd go ahead and you'd close the tab, let me go ahead and open up another one. It used to be that you'd have to sort of chase things like I just saw in KDE, but now they have fixed it. Mac, they tend to fix things like that when they have those weird bugs. And yes, on the Mac, I complained about that when they didn't have it correct. Did the same thing, of course, in Safari. And it will even do the same thing. Let me go ahead. I'm going to drag this down just to show some drag and drop. It'll do the same thing in Photoshop. This is a non-Apple program, but there we go. I could go back and forth between my tabs, and I could even drag something from this tab and drag it down. And now I have that in the tab. Something else, as long as I'm in Photoshop, I might as well show you. I've mentioned in other videos and other places color selection. If I click my color, I get my Mac color selector. That is universal throughout all programs on the Mac. But as a programmer, are you stuck with it? Of course not. If I go to my general preferences, I could say I prefer the Adobe color selector. And now when I come down here to my color selector, I have my Adobe one. So it's not like you're limited that you don't have the choice, but you can, if you want to do that, make it where they're all consistent and they all work together. Would be great if Linux gave you this choice.